Let's get started. I'm going to take you through this. Um, I see a problem that I'd actually like to do before we, before we begin uh, that will be very helpful for you with, in the coming classes on energetics. And it's a simple problem that looks at uh, heat flow, like we said, from an object to the surrounding. Remember, that's what we said, thermodynamics. You, you look at a heat flow from an object, say your hand, in and out of the environment, for instance. And there's a problem writing the book. It's a, it's a very simple problem, and it demonstrates this whole concept. Am I on the screen? Yeah? OK, now it says it's on, it's on the bottom of page 216. I want to start with that first. It says, how much heat is released? How much heat is released when 10 grams of copper with a specific heat capacity of 0.385, right? 0.385, OK? So copper, uh, specific heat capacity, constant pressure, is going to be 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, that's going to be the specific heat capacity. Now, in your reading, do you remember what specific heat capacity was? I'm looking for a marker, in case you're wondering why I'm looking down. Uh, there it is. Do you know what specific heat capacity is? Very simple. It's very specific. No pun intended. It's simply the, the amount of heat needed to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. That's all. And for this, it's going to be 0.385 joules. That's energy, mechanical energy, okay, as opposed to calories. You could use calories. Okay, for instance, one calorie equals 4.18 joules. It's a conversion. Okay, a lot of uh, books will use calories. This one obviously uses joules. And uh, it's that much heat, very small amount of heat, correct? and it will raise copper, one gram of copper, one degree Celsius, okay? Now, it, we know that the heat is going to be, the heat change is going to be Q, we're gonna call it Q, and that's gonna be the mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat capacity, okay? Now, a lot of books will say M, C, I just like to put delta T in the middle. That's just a me, a me thing. A lot of books will say Q equals M C delta T. I just like to put delta T in the middle. It just looks nicer. It kind of separates the mass and the specific heat capacity. I put sub P because we're doing it at constant pressure. Yes, we're doing it at one atmosphere. Clear? OK, so it says how much heat? This is the amount of heat. Right? That's either, it's either absorbed or given off. Now, it says how much heat is released when 10 grams of copper with a specific heat capacity of 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius is cooled from 85 degrees to 25 degrees. So the temperature, the initial temperature is 85 degrees. The final temperature is going to be 25 degrees, correct? Yes? And we know that delta T is always T final minus T initial. That will help you keep your wits about you when you're going to talk about something, uh, when you're going to talk about something um, exothermic or endothermic, okay? So right away, is this going to be exo or endothermic? It's going to be exo because it's giving heat off to the environment, right? It's with the perspective of the environment, correct? Remember? Okay. Now, so we have what mass? What's the mass? Um, what is it? Ten point zero grams. Okay. So it's going to be ten grams. What's the change in temperature? You can do this. 
No. What is it? Negative 60. Right? Because it's going to be final minus initial, right? 25 minus 85 is negative. Okay, so negative 60. And then the specific heat capacity, which is what? 0.385. Just make sure that everything is the way it should be, and then you can leave off the unit labels. Unit labels for specific heat capacity are a little annoying, but you can see that it's going to be grams, delta, delta uh, sorry, degree C, and then it will be joules per. So in other words, it's going to be grams, degree Celsius, joules, grams, degree Celsius, that cancels and you'll have to choose. So what's the answer? 10 times 60 times 0.385. Negative 231. Negative 231 what? Now, now it's important to put back the unit label. Joules. Joules, because joules left over, right? That's it? Isn't that what it says in the answer, I hope? Yeah, it's always nice to know what you're doing. When, it, when, it's, when, it, when I'm wrong a lot, that means that dementia is setting in and I should retire. So it's a good check on dementia, dementia check. Okay, so easy. So that's just a very simple application of, that's a very simple application of um, specific capacity. Let's do one that's a little bit more difficult. Let's continue with this, okay? Can we do that? Okay, now what did it say the specific heat capacity was of copper. What did it say it was? What did it say? 0.385, right? Yes? Okay. And um, joules per gram degree Celsius. What's water? You know? And I want liquid because it varies. Liquid, ice, steam, different. Four point one eight joules, right? Okay. Now let's say, let's say we're going to do an experiment in the lab. Okay. This actually could be a, a paper three problem. Could be. I'm telling you, could be. So, I take water, and I take a piece of copper, and I boil that copper, right? The water is 100 degrees Celsius. I've taken a thermometer, and I'm going to use a thermometer and calibrate it, et cetera, okay? But let's just say it's a perfect thermometer, which it's not, of course. No thermometer's perfect. Well, some are very close to perfect. But I take this and I boil it, yes? And then I take some kind of styrofoam adiabatic. What does adiabatic mean? Thou shalt not pass adiabatic, right? Like a styrofoam cup is adiabatic. It doesn't let heat in or out, right? It's very good. Styrofoam is, per is wonderful that way. So I take a styrofoam cup. Well, let's say... Let's say 100. Let's go crazy. 100 degrees Celsius of water. Okay? Is that okay? And I take, you know what? I take 100 grams of water. Sorry, that's 100 grams of H2O. And we're going to say it has a starting temperature of 20 degrees. And that's going to be Ti. Right? Yes or no? Okay, and we're going to say that this is going to be 100 grams of copper. Okay, yes? And we know what the specific heat capacity is, and we know what the, of water and copper, yes? Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that copper, and I'm going to put it in the water. What's going to happen to the water? Is it going to get colder? Hotter? Nothing? It'll get hotter, won't it? You look stunned. 
You okay with that? Is the copper a fractional reaction? Or no, the copper is it's just wouldn't boil. It's just... Okay, that, yes. I boiled the copper. Yeah, thank you. That makes sense. Didn't cook it. Just boiled it. Okay? We're having boiled copper for dinner. Okay? So I know that I'm going to heat the water. Is that fair? You sure? Yes or no? Okay, good. So now, <clears throat> what I have is, I have water, I have 100 grams of water, and it goes from the delta, there's a delta change, and it's going to be T final. What's the, do we know what the final temperature is? No, we don't. But we know what the initial temperature is. So let's list our data, shall we? Shall we list our data? Okay, so we have, we have the mass of copper. That's going to be 100 grams. The mass of the water. That's going to be 100 grams. The, final, the initial temperature of the water, that's going to be 20 degrees Celsius. Are you okay with this so far? Make sense? You could almost see yourself doing this in a lab, couldn't you? Not very, very difficult, is it? Okay, and then you have initial temperature of the copper is what? What's the initial temperature of the copper? Hmm? Yeah, it's 100. Doesn't it take on the temperature of the water? Doesn't it? Right? Okay, good. And then uh, here are the specific heat capacities. Now, let's pretend all energy stay with the copper and the water. Okay? In that that's a system. You see that that's a final system? Yes? And I have 100 grams of copper. Yes? Do you see that? Now, so what can we say? Can I erase this? Yes? What can we say about the conservation of energy? Can we say this? Let me lead you on here. Can we say this? Can we say that the energy loss, what's losing energy, the water or the metal? Metal. The energy loss of the copper is going to equal, is going to plus, sorry, plus the energy gained by the water is going to equal zero. Can I say that? Is that okay? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, good. Therefore, can I say that the energy loss equals negative energy gain? Can I say that? Okay, good. What does the, what, 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 what represents the energy gained? What represents the energy gained? The temperature of the water. Okay, I like that. The, I'm sorry, the energy gain, yeah, the energy gain is going to be the temperature of the water or the change in temperature of the water? Yeah, yeah okay. Change in temperature of the water. What else? What else? Mass. What is it? The mass. The mass. And what else? Hmm? The specific heat capacity. Isn't that true? Does it? And what about the heat loss of the metal? What, what represents that? Same thing? Yes, correct. But we're going to put that in here. In other words, that negative is, is not part of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you're taking the additive inverse of whatever's there. But yes, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in there. But the negative is not part of it. It's important. That's very important. Okay? Are you okay with that? Okay, good. So now, can I do some more erasing? I'm trying to fit everything on one film here. So, all right, so then, then, therefore, I can say, what did I say energy loss? 
equals negative energy gained. Is that what I said? Yep. Okay, so is this the metal or the water? The, um, the, the metal. So the mass of the copper times final minus initial of the copper times the specific capacity of the copper equals the mass of the water times the temperature final minus initial of the water and then the specific heat capacity of the water. Is that all on the film? Okay. You okay with that? Yes, ma'am. Did I make a mistake? You're good. You okay? Yes? What else? So can I plug in now? How many grams of uh, uh, copper was it? How many grams of copper? 100 grams and TF minus TI. What, what do we know about TI? Do we know anything about TF? We don't know what TF is, right? That's what we're looking for? Right. Is that the same for the water and the copper? Is TF going to be the same or different or what? Do we what? It'll be different? It'll be the same because the copper and water are sitting in the same container. So the final temperature of the copper and the water will be the same. All right. So what's the initial temperature of the copper? 100 degrees Celsius. What is it? 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius. I like that. And then what's the specific heat capacity? Let's leave off the unit labels and all. That's annoying. Isn't it 0.385? Okay, now remember, when you're doing the IB, you know, you can give them whatever they want, you know, go crazy. But let's just get through this, okay? So the water side of it is 100 grams, right? If I recall correctly, yeah. And then it's going to be TF minus 20, right? Yeah. Okay, and then what's the specific capacity of the water? Certain things in life you should memorize. 4.18. 4.18, right. Okay, are we okay with that? Can we simplify this in any way before we begin? Sure. Get rid of the hundred, right? Can we? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, I gotta multiply, I gotta distribute through 0.385 and 4.18. Yes? So what is 0.385 times TF? is 0.385 TF minus 38.5, is that correct? Yeah. Yes? Now if you use the unit labels and brought those through, you would absolutely lose your mind. Okay, so if you make sure that the unit labels are correct when you begin, then you do the math and then you hang them on at the end, like little ornaments, okay? So this is going to be 4.18 TF minus, what's 4.18 times 20? 80 something, what, what is it? 83.6, is that right? Okay, good. You, what is it? I got to do the negative side, excellent. Portia, you are the conscience of the class today. I like it. She's keeping us honest. Because that's where a lot of students fall short. Okay? A lot of students fall short with the negative sign there. Big, 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 big. Okay? Yes? Now, I will tell you precisely how to tell whether or not you forgot your minus sign. All right? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Okay, now. So now, let's rewrite it, distributing the negative sign. 0.385 TF minus 
equals negative 4.18 TF plus 83.6. Is that correct? Okay. Are we all right with that? Now, what are we going to do? We're going to put the TFs to one side. Yep. All right. So add, add 0.385 plus 4.18. So it'll be 8 point, sorry, 0 0.8, 02? Yes? So I mean 0 03, what is it? 4.565. Oh, 4, sorry, duh. what's wrong with my brain? I mean 4 point what? 565. 565. Is that right? Is that right? Okay, and that's going to be TF. And then add 38.5 to both sides. So 38.5 and 83.6. What is it going to be? 122.1. Okay? No, I'm making this over here so it's going to be positive, right? Yeah, because once you move it to the other side, the negative from the point. Right? You're just changing the signs and adding, right? Are you all right with that? Just a slight blip on the radar there? You okay? Yeah. Okay. So now divide through by 4.565, and you get what? 26.7. What is it? 26.7. 26.7? Okay, that's a little crazy with the significant figures. IB would call, call you out because you only have one significant figure here. Yeah, 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 but don't worry about it, I don't care. All right, so 26.75, right? So does that make sense, though? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah, you got, a, you got like 100 grams of copper and 100 grams of water, although the copper is very dense, so it obviously fits in the water. Um, it's not going to raise the water level that much because it's so dense. It's like eight times more dense. So now, let's just try this. So we know that the answer is 26.75. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? Easy? Right? Now, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Let's... Um, Let's bring this over here, right? So this will be, we'll forget the negative sign, right? So let's bring this over here. What do you get? 4.18 minus 0.385. What is it? 3.795. And then bring this over here, so it's going to be 83.6 minus 38.5 45.1 correct you get that right okay now divide 45.1 by 3.795 what is it 11.88 11.88 right now that may happen in another galaxy but there's no way it's going to happen in our galaxy that you're going to get a number that's colder. Right? It's got to be greater than 20, right? So it's a dead giveaway when you forget that negative sign. Yes, it's important. Yes, you've got to remember it. But when you make a mistake with this kind of problem, it's obvious. The chemistry, the physics, the thermodynamics, has to make sense. You get it? It has to make sense. And the more you know your chemistry, the more you do your reading and you have an understanding of the theories involved, the more sense the answer will make. Clear? So that's why it's kind of important to know a little bit about that theory because when you do your calculations and you examine it, reflect on it, you can see whether or not it makes sense. Are you okay? We're off.